Are there intolerable opinions? If so, how should we spot them and respond to them? If not, how do we tolerate evil opinions? You want to take that? Sure, one, sure. <laughs> or we can just pass it up and go to number five. No, 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 no. no I think Brother Robert, he's got an answer to that. Yeah. I think it, it, that was very, very Jesus-like of you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you take that one. I'm something of an extremist on this. I will uh, confess, an extreme uh, uh, supporter of John Stuart Mill's yeah. principles of uh, uh, liberty in Chapter Two of On Liberty. I've been a critic of, of Mill's general harm principle articulated in Chapter One of our, On Liberty. I can't give you the page number. Yeah, I was Cornell's just... got it memorized. <laughs> uh, but in, in Chapter Two, when he talks about liberty of thought and expression, and my view is that especially in the university context, especially in the context of a university that is non-sectarian, like Princeton University, that doesn't make a faith commitment up front, take a stand, yeah. but presents itself as, a, as an institution that is welcome, welcoming all points of view, mm -hmm. providing a forum for the engagement of ideas. So the kind of university in which I spend my days. I think it's very important that we be willing to listen to anybody who's willing to come into the university context and present reasons and arguments. In other words, to do business in the currency of academic discourse, the currency of reasons and arguments, even if I deeply oppose, if I abominate the position being articulated. Uh -huh. Professor West and I have a famous colleague, Peter Singer. Peter Singer not only believes in the legitimacy of abortion through the entire nine months, he believes in infanticide, yeah. the killing of infants, the moral permissibility of the killing of infants even after they're born. Now this to me is an outrageous abomination. In a sense, that is an intolerable, intolerable idea. The idea that any human being, any member of the human family yeah. can be directly targeted for killing, mm -hmm. you know, that that to me is just a, a, an intolerable, intolerable thing. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, yeah. I would be the first one in line to oppose the eviction of Peter Singer. This scandalizes some of my conservative pro-life friends to oppose, uh, to, uh, uh, to oppose evicting Peter Singer from, yeah. from Princeton. Now, there's some people who feel about me, yeah. some people who feel about Cornell, yeah. the yeah. way I feel about uh, Peter Singer. Now, and that's because Professor Singer is prepared to make arguments and give reasons for his position. Mm -hmm. So if he's willing to do that, I am willing to listen, and I am in fact willing to listen with an open mind. Now, none of those arguments has cut any ice with me. I've yeah. listened to them respectfully. But I've, he has the right to persuade you. It, it's it's not just the right to say it. Yeah. He's got more, in the university context, in the yeah. context of truth seeking, yeah. he's got the right more than to say it, mm -hmm. as terrible as I think it is. He's got the right to have me listen and thoughtfully consider mm -hmm. what he has to say. Our devotion to truth should be so yeah. powerful yeah. Yeah. that we are willing to do that because it is conceivable that even an opinion that strikes us and me and probably strikes many of you as so abominable, abominable could be right. And even if it's wrong, which I'm quite confident it is, yeah. Yeah. we have something to learn <laughs> about yeah. Yeah. the basis of our belief in That's the right. sanctity of life from confronting the very best reasons that a very intelligent yeah. person can adduce against the sanctity of life position. And Professor Singer makes, leaves us in no doubt that what he is aiming for is the destruction of the yeah. basic sanctity of life principle yeah. that's part of our Judeo-Christian uh, heritage. So uh, now, does that mean I'm in favor of simply unlimited speech? No, and I don't think anybody really is. Mm -hmm. What I'm against is abuse, yeah hurling epithets, yeah. incivility, mm -hmm. a grunt or a name-calling yeah. uh, 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 episode mm -hmm. is not making reasons and arguments. Mm -hmm. It is not the, uh, the uh, currency of academic discourse to simply verbally assault someone or yeah. brutalize yeah. someone. Yeah. But if someone's willing to make, to make arguments and provide reasons and cause us to think, then I think we've got to tolerate it in the rich sense of toleration, not just letting him speak, but listening to him.